Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Adventures of Superman issue 6 by Tom Taylor and Clayton Henry. John Kent's time on Earth Injustice comes to an end this issue as Superman decides it's time to confront the Injustice Superman, but he's going to do it on his own terms. Throughout this entire run, I've been wondering just how John is going to end up against Injustice Superman, but I knew he wouldn't be fighting him from the get-go since that's not John's way and hasn't been since he's started his role as Superman. All through Taylor's run with the character, we have been processing how John Superman is different from his father, and how he helps the world in his own way, and the issues he decides to confront on a daily basis, and this issue puts it all out there for everyone to see. Most of the issue is John going up against the regime members, and it was so thoroughly satisfying since he only ever fought one of them. First he meets the Flash in super speed time, and they end up talking things out for hours on end with Flash eventually deciding to go against the regime and sort of turn his back on Superman. The one thing Taylor reminds us of is a lot of the heroes and people in the Injustice universe who are working for the regime are intrinsically good people. They are just towing the line since Superman is the one in charge and they are actively scared of him, Barry being one of them. And we'll see this even develop even more in Injustice 2, the video game where he's got the ankle monitor on and he's given himself up and everything. Thing. Taylor also touches on Wonder Woman in this universe, and this is the one person John actually has to fight just because Wonder Woman in this universe isn't someone you can't just talk with or talk things out with. She's particularly violent and one of Injustice Superman's actual followers and one that has his ear, so John targeting her to try and take her down before she can poison Clark even more is quite cool. We see him using the knowledge he learned earlier on in the series when Superman and the regime had to go to Titan to deal with a problem and that's how he decides to best Diana by leaving her on Titan and preventing her from interfering, giving him some time to go and confront this otherworldly version of his father. John also uses this opportunity to get the lasso of truth and use it to confront Damien, appealing to Damien's buried love for his father and using it to sort of bring those feelings to the surface again. This allows him to have Damien go and free his father and Harley and all of the other people while Superman confronts the Injustice Superman man which is the big back half of the issue and he confronts him on a very public stage. The two have a little bit of an ideology battle but the Injustice Superman's logic is very obviously flawed as he believes torturing Jay will cause Superman to snap and try and attack and try and kill him. Very much like how he originally snapped and killed the Joker when someone he loved was tortured and killed. John however doesn't actually do that and ends up hugging the villain and doing a very 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 Superman thing of giving him a chance. In Justice Superman of course doesn't want that, only wanting to fight, and I kind of like that there's a meta commentary with that action because this character started off as a fighting game character and for him to only want to ever fight is kind of interesting because that's all the character in the video game would want to do because there's a video game character whose sole purpose is to fight with other people on a screen and there's I think a little bit of meta commentary there with the character just wanting to do that constantly. John won't fight those since in his own words he's Superman and Superman doesn't kill or lead through fear or is cruel or malevolent. Superman is a friend and he always helps. This is where Taylor brings back Lois's message for John and because of how the message is structured it actually also ends up resonating with the Injustice Superman as well. Before John can actually fully help the man though Cyborg manages to shoot him back into his own world which is one part I didn't particularly like since a John just seemingly forgot Cyborg was a threat here he was part of the regime that they met and B Cyborg suddenly has this gun developed now for some reason it's it's a little weird but there is enough there to plant the seeds in Injustice Superman that what he is doing is wrong and how important it is to be Superman again it's kind of laying the seeds down for what we see of him in Injustice 2 and through the rest of year 5 because this is has been confirmed by Tom Taylor to be set during and around year 5 of Injustice this is also the perfect representation of Jor-El's classic line from the Superman the movie which is the son becomes the father and the father becomes the son. It just represents that so much with John using the stuff that he was taught by his father and grandfather and all the things he's learned in his own life to help reteach another version of his father what it is to be Superman and instill those values back into him and I think that's really really cool and such a Superman thing to do. It's been so exciting to have a writer who intrinsically understands Superman on 
on every level and can explore classic themes like this sort of stuff in new and interesting ways with John. John however does indeed get sent back to Earth Zero and we are left on a little bit of a cliffhanger building towards Beast World which he will definitely be a part of as we find out that there is something very wrong with the world so I guess the next time we'll see John while well, we see him in Action Comics and over in Steelworks you know he's big main centerpiece of the Superman family over in the Superman books he will obviously play a big part in Beast World which makes sense because Taylor is writing that as well. Now onto the things I didn't particularly like now I mentioned the cyborg stuff as well and what really took me out of the issue uh, on several occasions was the fact that Val Zod and Red Tornado never came back into the story. I know since the book's release Taylor has said that they are coming back and this was to plant their seeds for their return so they're most likely much like John going to be in Beast World or something along those lines. It's a little frustrating since I was really looking forward to seeing them come back and they made such a big deal about them coming back as well and it'd been such a long time since we'd seen these characters and then they just get kind of fridged and sort of put back into cold storage just as quick as they came. Taylor's finale of Adventures of Superman is sure to upset some people who are looking for big action and fights, but as a Superman fan, I can't think of a more perfect summary of who the Man of Steel and the Man of Tomorrow can be as characters. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Thank you so much for joining me here on this review, I really appreciate it. And while you're here, why not check out the rest of the Adventures of Superman and what I thought about it in my other reviews with this handy playlist, or what's going on over in the Marvel Universe with my review of Ultimate Invasion. Asian issue 2.